Continuing with linked lists, and I feel like this is a pattern with me. Sometimes in each video, I feel like I promise something exciting in the next video, and then we sort of end up taking a step back anyway. So we're going to go a step backward for a moment. In this insert second method that we wrote at the end of the last video, something I I should have I should have pointed out um, is that we didn't have to write this code in three lines. We could actually be kind of clever here, right? If you look at what we're doing, uh, actually, first observation is I say new node set next to be list get next. Well, if the very first thing I'm going to do with this node is change its next to be list get next, maybe I should have just written list get next in the first place instead of null. And I'm sure some of you watching are thinking, yes, you idiot, that's what we were thinking all along. Why did you make that extra line of code for no reason? Okay, yeah, so we won't store null. We'll just make the new node have that data value s and list get next in the first line. Something else, now if you look at it, I don't really need new node, right? I mean, I need to make a new node, but I don't need to give it this name because all I do is I use it just once on the next line. So maybe instead of new node, I could just write new node s list, so I could write all of that. S list get next. I hope I have the right number of parentheses there. And so it turns out I can write this whole thing in one line. And it makes sense. It says in order to insert a node to be a data value s to be second in a list list, I just simply say list set your next to be a brand new node with this s that continues into the part of the list that was originally referred to by list get next. Right? Set the next to be a new node whose next is the old next. So I think that's kind of a clever way of writing this. And over time you'll you'll see shortcuts like this where you can accomplish a lot with a linked list in just one line. Alright. But the real goal for today, the real goal is I want to find how long is a linked list. So we'll draw a linked list so that we can look at one as we write this code. And normally when we draw a linked list, we also want to make sure that we draw the front of the linked list too. So we'll probably, I guess we'll make a variable, we'll call it list again, and list refers to that first node. So there's our linked list. I don't really care what data values are inside the linked list, because all we're going to do is find the size of the list, which doesn't involve looking at the data, the data values at all. So find the size of this linked list. Public static int, right? The size is a number, an integer, size, and it's going to take in a linked list called list, which is, remember list, that means list refers to a node. So that's the challenge. Find the number of nodes in this list. How can we find the number of nodes in the list? Well, I think I can probably convince you that in order to determine how many nodes are in a linked list, we're going to need to count them. And that means we're going to have a loop. And if we're going to have a loop, we have to think about what kind of loop. One option is that we could write this code recursively and not have an explicit loop at all. And that ends up being a really beautiful idea, but I, I want to stick with uh, more uh, some simple loops at first, right? So. One kind of loop we might use is a for loop, one is a while loop, and there's a good reason to use a while loop here. And that's because this is a situation where I don't know how many times to loop, but I'll know when I get to the end. And that's usually a moment to use a while loop. So while something, uh, let's not worry about what the something is. What's something that needs to happen in the loop? Well, I need to count. So I'll assume I have a variable called count, and we'll increment it inside the loop. So oops, I guess I better... So here's count, it starts at 0, and inside the loop we'll add 1, and at the end we'll return that count that we computed. So far so good. But of course, I actually need to walk down the list somehow, right? I need to actually make some progress. So when I enter the loop, it's fine that I count 1 for this first node, but the next time through the loop, I should be counting 1 for the next node. So I need list to be referring to not the first node anymore, but the second node. How do I change this variable list so that it now refers, instead of the first node, it now refers to the second node, and that'll be my way of walking down the list. How do I do that? 
Well, let's go back in time. That means I need to determine the next node. Determine the next node. So let's see, that would be list dot get next. That's the next node. But of course, that line doesn't do anything. That just says, what's the next node? And then I cover my ears, la 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 la, I'm not listening to the answer. I want to do something with that answer. Get me the next node and store that next node in my variable. So this line here, list equals list get next, that's kind of the equivalent of count plus plus, or I plus plus as we're using a for loop or whatever. This is, uh, that's how we increment a linked list variable, right? We increment it by saying my variable should now refer to the next node in the list. That's how I walk down a list. So we'll see this very frequently as a line of code in, in a loop. <coughs> More irritating coughing. I'm so sorry. It's probably worse for me than it is for you to listen to. Um, but, you know, if I have millions of listeners, then I suppose that has magnified the pain of listening to my cough. That's probably worse than the cough itself. Anyway, back to uh, back to the linked list and finding its size. Uh, while what? Well, one thing you might think is, well, maybe, clearly, while you haven't come to null, right? Null is what signifies you're at the end of the list. The null is the next for the last node. So you might imagine while list get next is not null. When list get next is null, you're at the last node. And if we run this code, as is, it's going to do pretty well. It turns out it does indeed walk through the list. Um, I guess I'll prove that to you soon enough, but for now, take, take my word for it. This is going to walk through the list, and it's going to count, and it's going to return a count. And it turns out for this code up here, it's going to return two. It's going to return two. Maybe I'll see if I can convince you. In what it does is it says, is list get next null? Nope. It's not null. It's this thing. Therefore, count. Let's uh, work through this. Count was zero. Count becomes a one. And then list becomes list get next. So that means list refers to what used to be list get next. And we continue. Is list get next null? Nope. So add to count. Count becomes <coughs> excuse me two. And then list equals list get next. That means list now refers to the next one over here. And while list get next is not null, but list get next is null. So we're going to bail out of the loop and return two. Well, that's not right. So you may th be thinking, hmm, that means maybe instead of returning count, I should return one more than count. Or maybe we should start count at one. And that will indeed correct this problem, and we'll get back three, we'll get back the right number of nodes. And that's a, it's good that we'll get back the right number by doing one of those tricks, like return count plus one, we'll stick with that trick for now. Um, but that actually tells us something's wrong. Something's wrong with this program if we have to do that. And if you think about it, this program makes an assumption. It assumes that the list is not empty. Because when we say list get next, if the list were empty, Remember, the empty list is null, so if the list is empty and we say null.getNext, that will crash. We'll get a null pointer exception. In fact, we're going to see so many null pointer exceptions now that we're working with linked lists. They're going to drive us mad. So if list is null, meaning it was empty all along, this program will crash. And that's not a good thing, because it makes sense to ask what the size of null is, right? Null is an empty linked list. It's a linked list with zero values, so its size should be zero. If my program crashes on an empty linked list, well, then my program doesn't work for all reasonable inputs. So what should we do here? There's a beautiful solution to this problem. Get rid of this plus one, and that's while, well, really, if list get next is null, I'm not done counting. I'm still on the last node, which means I still need to increment my count. So the only time I should stop counting is when list itself is null, right? When list itself is null. So that in this situation, I would now, I would see, oop, list is not null yet. List is this thing. So count becomes, count increases to three, and list becomes list get next. List get next is null. So list, oops, too much erasing list becomes null. 
And now that list is null, we'll exit the loop and we'll return count, which is 3, which is a good thing. Another good thing is, if the list had been empty all along, and we ask, what's the size of null? Count will start out being 0, list will be null right away, we'll never enter the loop, and we'll return that 0, which is the correct answer for the size of null. So that's a good thing. So this is how we find the size of a linked list, and I think this gives you a good sense of how you loop through a linked list using a while loop. The last thing I want to I wanna leave you with a claim about this code that may have bothered you. It may be bothering you that we're changing list. We're changing list. Are we destroying this linked list somehow in this program? Did we just destroy the linked list? Right? Originally, list referred to this. At the end of the code, list is null. Have we damaged the linked list we were given? And the answer is no, we have not. And that's because list, list is a local variable. The list variable is going to die right here at the end of my method, right? So it doesn't matter what I store in list at the end of the method. What matters is what's going on, on the outside. So suppose I suppose this is a list of uh, I don't know. Let's say this is a list of employees, employees of some company. And I then say, you know, I'd like to know how many employees are in this company. So I say size of employees. At that moment, employees, which is this node here, that node gets passed in, and that node gets uh, referred to by this variable list. And then inside this code, list changes and list walks down the list, and eventually list is null. And we return oops, we return 3, because apparently there were 3 elements of this linked list. Apparently my company has 3 employees, but don't worry, we're growing fast. Um, so notice, it's okay that list change to becoming null, because list is inconsequential. It's just a local variable. It's just a temporary variable inside the size method. When I return from size, and I'm back in the world where I knew that employees referred to this list, well, employees itself has a change. Only my local variable advanced down the list, so I haven't destroyed my list at all. But I think we'll, we'll come back and, and revisit that distinction many times, because I think that's one of the most subtle things about working with a linked list, is when does my method destroy the list, and when does the method just simply walk down the list without destroying it. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.